Hi, this is Kara from the Special Needs Mom podcast. And this is Angela from Especially Organized, Sensible Solutions for Special Needs Moms. We have this heart for special needs moms. And so we thought, you know what, let's combine forces. And we have come up with what we're calling the purge party. And you can pretty much guess what it is. It's a party where we're going to come together and we're going to purge or in general, accomplish a goal, a small goal together. So we have set this for January 27th, starting at eight o'clock for my Pacific Coast people. Which means 11 o'clock for all of you on the East Coast. So this is an opportunity. If you have something on your to-do list that has just been stuck there and you are wanting to move it up on the list, you're wanting to tackle, maybe it's a space or an area of your home or a category in your home that has just needed a little time and attention. This is your opportunity for you to be online with us while you work and have access for us to help you answer your questions, help guide you and just serve you for those two hours. Yeah, exactly. And I think you can tell like what we've designed is just this very high level of support for that project that you just haven't been able to tackle on your own. The thing that we are envisioning is that you get to leave this purge party feeling so accomplished because you did the thing, you started the year off getting that thing done that you you were stuck on last year. And so it's a momentum builder, if you will. You can go ahead and sign up. We have a link ready for you. And we are offering this for $40 for the whole experience. Absolutely. And we hope you'll join us. I think it's going to be really fun. It's going to be a great group of moms of special needs kids. So we all get each other. We all have an understanding of what it's like to have something on our to-do list, but just we haven't been able to tackle it yet. So I hope that you will join us. We're super excited to bring this to you and we are thrilled to work with you. All right. We'll see you all there. Hi, I'm Kara Riska, life coach, wife, and the mother of four incredible and unique kids. It wasn't all that long ago that my son received a diagnosis that had my world come crashing down. I completely lacked the ability to see past the circumstances, which felt impossible, and the dreams I once had for my life and family felt destroyed. Fast forward past many years of surviving and not at all thriving, and you'll see a mom who trusts that she can handle anything that comes her way and has access to the power and grace that once felt so completely lacking. I started the Special Needs Mom podcast to create connection and community with moms who find themselves up against what feels impossible. My intention is to spark the flare of possibility in your own life and rekindle the dreams that you hold impossible now. This isn't a podcast about your special needs child. This is a podcast about you. If you're a mom who feels anxious, alone, or stuck, then you are in the right place. Welcome. Well, hello and welcome back to the Special Needs Mom podcast. Your host, Kara Riska here. You know what? Let's introduce myself. I know that the introduction to this podcast says that I am a mom of four and one of my children has some very unique circumstances. I actually just came back from a very last minute weekend camp for my son. And it was it was called cranio camp. My son is a survivor of a very rare type of brain tumor that stems from the pituitary. So we were amongst I think there was nine other kids there that had actually kids and, and adults. There was adult survivors that was really interesting to meet adult survivors. And also very striking to see the similarities that these people have as a result of having the same type of tumor. It was really, really interesting. Anyhow, so I am a mom of four children, ages 14 as of yesterday, down to four, three boys and a little girl. And my 12-year-old is my brain tumor survivor. So it's interesting. When you have impact to the brain... (laughs) Uh, especially the way that my son did. I feel like I have a foot in so many worlds because we have visual impairment and we have a very complex medical situation as a result of now of uh, his lack of pituitary, 
we have behavioral challenges. We have a physical disability because um, his brain was impacted, much like a stroke a person that has a stroke. And so therefore, we have hemiplegia. And so we have that and much, much more. Actually, I think that's it. Anyhow, that is a lot. <laughs> so it's and then so we also are in the cancer world. And so it is interesting. Um, I'm also a mother who had lost a baby to a very late term miscarriage. Anyway, that is a little bit of who I am. And so as a result of that diagnosis, almost 10 years ago, actually, it'll be 10 years ago in three days. Wow. 10 years ago, I was woefully ill-equipped to handle that life. And I spent so many nights going to bed feeling so hopeless, so hopeless and so stuck. And I was just, every night I would just think, how can I get out of this? How, how can this nightmare end? I, I couldn't ever figure that out because I, my son's conditions are not uh, going away. They are lifelong. And I mentioned that because I know a lot of you might be in that same similar, same or similar situation where you're finding yourself in a situation much likely due to the diagnosis of your child. You feel stuck because you know their diagnosis is not going away and even worse, you've actually done everything that you can even think of or pay for to try to make it better. And it's not really helping that much. So it, then it feels even more hopeless. And I have good news for you. <laughs> there is hope. There is so much hope. I want you to consider having a conversation, a one-on-one conversation with me. Because the group coaching program called Being Mom Together is designed to meet you right in this space of feeling a little bit stuck and hopeless and like nothing's ever going to change, even that it's like not even possible. That's where that's where oftentimes uh, mothers are starting. And through the group coaching, through the conversations, we shift and we open access to recognizing where possibility is and to understanding what's happening for you that has it so hopeless. Like what's going on in your brain? That's what are the stories that are happening over and over again to even make it feel more concrete that you're stuck, you're hopeless, and there's no way out of being so tired and weary. I invite you again to that conversation and I hope you will consider giving yourself that opportunity. And now, also, I want to tell you about some things. We're actually about, we're about a month away from the year anniversary of this show. I'm really excited about that. And I have some fun episodes in store for the year anniversary. Also, something I'm going to start doing more of, back by popular demand, is life coaching shows where, uh, and if you remember, if you're new here, go back and listen to the episode with Kayla. I can't remember the n- the number of the episode, but it was it was in the last mm, two months where we actually I got on a call and I we we coached around a topic that she wanted to get some coaching on. We created some awareness, and I got a lot of feedback from that episode that people liked it, and they were like, "Oh, so that's what coaching is." And so I want to do more shows like that. I think it's really, really powerful to hear somebody else get coached. And that's why I love it in the group coaching program is because it's not always you in the spotlight. You get to watch another mom having your very same like challenge in her head. Like she's talking and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I totally feel you. So not only do you get to fall in more in love with her because you're like, I got you, I got you, and we're going to do this together, you feel more normalized, and you feel more part of a group that gets you. So there's that too. Okay, back to what I was saying about group coaching. No, excuse me. Back to what I was saying about life coaching. So if you want to apply to be coached 
and are willing to have your coaching anonymously, like, I mean, your, your voice will obviously be out there, but you do not have to share your name or uh, we don't have to promote it on your social channels. But if you're willing to do that, it's a really amazing opportunity and an opportunity to serve your fellow moms. So this episode today that I have in store for you actually came up as a result of this weekend that I had at this cranio camp. So what happened time and time again is people would come up to me and they would say, wow, your son is amazing. And you want to know what happened in my head? I would think you have no idea what you're not seeing. You have no idea. And it happened a couple times. And I, I kind of was like, hmm, that's interesting that you can't receive that compliment. Because so quickly, it comes up for me that they don't see the hard parts. They don't see what I have to experience. And then I'm thinking of all the times that people come up to me and say about my son, oh my gosh, he is amazing. He's so polite. He is so sweet. And again, I'm thinking, yeah, he stole my gum this morning again for the millionth time. And he flipped me off. And he listed, and and, and I could list all the different um, profane words that he called me this morning. And so in my mind, I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, no. And I like cancel out the compliment because it's in conflict with all the hard that we're experiencing. So it's like this this picture of of me on the outside gracefully accepting their compliment saying, oh, thank you. (laughs) But in my mind thinking, yeah, right. Yeah, but... Like I said, it was like almost like I couldn't allow the goodness of him to be acknowledged because of my awareness of all the hard parts. And I thought about as I was kind of processing this, maybe on my drive home, I thought of one of my clients and she, like you, most likely works endlessly to support her daughter, receives no thank you or acknowledgement. Her daughter's nonverbal, so she receives nothing uh, affirming all that she does. And when people acknowledge the amazingness of her unending, unstopping service of her daughter, she cannot receive it because she cancels it out because she knows that when she's doing it, she's not always thrilled. She does not have a smile on her face. And so she is using that to cancel out the acknowledgement of who she is being for her daughter. And so can you picture yourself in this place where people acknowledge you and say, you're doing an amazing job. And you're thinking on the inside, yeah, but I could do so much better. I could do so much more. You don't even know. I just lost my beep (laughs) on my kids. So therefore, you just cancel out the compliment. So think back to the last time someone gave you a compliment. Did you yeah, but it? Did you think thank you on the outside, but think on the inside, you have no idea. Or I could be doing so much more. Or think, yeah, but it doesn't matter because my child's not getting better. Do you see how this is such an easy, easy cancellation conversation? And then there's, of course, the deflection. Like if someone says, wow, you did a really, your hair looks so amazing. Then you say, oh, yeah, thanks. I must be having a lucky day or I don't know. That's a weird example. A lot of the moms I talk to want to feel more confident. And if you merely believed the things that people say to you, and share with you as acknowledgments, I guarantee you would feel more confident. I want to give you three things to think about when it comes to receiving compliments. 
Here's the first one. There's no downside. There is absolutely no downside that I can think of. And if you can think of, I want to hear about it because I really don't think there's a downside to just receiving it, to really hearing it and saying, thank you. The next thing is, number two, is I want you to recognize that letting compliments in takes practice. Why? Because you've practiced not letting them in for a very long time, likely. And so you're automatically doing it at this point. It's what you've practiced, right? It's like if you play tennis a lot and you are well practiced, you do certain types of swings without even thinking about it. And so just like this, you're very well practiced at deflecting and rejecting compliments or canceling them out. And so it's going to take some practice to start taking them in. I want you to consider letting the compliment like wash over you like a ray of sunshine, like use that picture. So when I'm now receiving a compliment from somebody, I really pause and think about what they're saying. I think about how it might be true and how it is true. I think about how good it feels that they're telling me this thing and that this thing that they're telling me is true about me. I'm thinking about how lovely it is that they see this thing and that I get to hear it from them. The third thing I want you to think about, and I've kind of alluded to this, is that this is not algebra. So think back to algebra when you had to like cancel out the things on both sides. It's been a while since I've done algebra. (laughs) But I do know you have to balance and cancel. That's not how compliments work. So using myself as the example, when my when someone out there meets my son and is truly touched by him, I don't have to cancel that out by acknowledging in my head things that are not that lovely part of him. We all have lovely things about us and not so lovely things about us. And I thought it was kind of interesting the way that I was being about even like in my son's example or my example, that it was like I was holding this compliment as unacceptable because there was these other things that were true about my son as well. It's like think of a doctor that's truly touched your child's life in a good way. And think about all the good that they have done for you. And then recognize that they have probably unintentionally made a mistake on another child. And so it's like, it's like them not being able to receive your compliment of what they have done for your child because they weren't purely perfect all the time. If you have a hard time loving yourself and thinking kind thoughts about yourself, this will be a transformative practice for you. As you, as you can use the compliment from another person as evidence of your goodness. Oftentimes it's easier for us to give credit to another person, especially one that we respect, rather than just our own thoughts. An example is, If someone else says, you look lovely, oftentimes we give more credit to that compliment than if we look in the mirror and think, wow, you look lovely. And so let's use that to our advantage, that it's just simply easier for us to think that. So if there's perhaps a doctor that has looked you in the eye and said, you are doing a phenomenal job, use that as evidence to build up your own belief that you are doing a phenomenal job. And maybe it's not a compliment, like I said, maybe it's like in my case, I'm using a compliment about my son as letting that in. I mean, obviously it's no reflection of me, but so this can be a compliment about you or about your child. It doesn't really matter. My challenge to you this week 
I'm going to keep this episode nice and short for summer, is to go forth this week and to give five genuine compliments to others. This could be somebody maybe that you see on a regular basis, one of the medical providers for your children, maybe one of the therapists that's particularly been helpful to you. This could be somebody that helps you check out the store that it's just that you find something that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be be a big thing. I want you to genuinely give them as a little gift to that person. This is a good practice too, because you have no control over how they're going to receive it. You might notice them kind of like reject it. And that's okay. You don't have to control that part. But I want you to give it. I want you to give it as a genuine gift. And then I want you to practice receiving. Okay, so I want you to notice even just the small things that people say to you. And I want you to practice really letting them in. And as an extra bonus, I want you to go ask for acknowledgement. Maybe this is to your spouse And if your spouse is anything like mine, he'll like totally freak out. (laughs) Okay, so my love language is words of affirmation. And that is not the way that my husband gives love. He generally serves and he's amazing. And I can ask my husband for acknowledgement and he will give it. But he definitely, um, he gets a little, a little worried about (laughs) about doing this efficiently. And so I we, we have kind of a, a running joke about it because um, I'll kind of tell him something that I want him to tell me. That's an acknowledgement. And I'm like, you just literally have to say it back to me. Like, just, just say exactly what I said back to me. <laughs> and anyhow, so we obviously have fun with it. But um, so I have some friends that are much better at, at acknowledgement than he is. And so I will go to them. Um, sometimes um, this is this is like what nerdy coaches do is we actually go to each other and ask for acknowledgement. Okay, so that's a bonus. I successfully kept this episode short. And I want you to go and notice all the yeah buts that you have going on. I want you to have a really great week. I think a lot of you are going back to school. We still have quite a bit of summer left. And so I want to know if there's any special requests out there for as we go back to school, as we transition into fall, a different season. What do you want to hear more about on this podcast? What do you maybe want less of? I would love to hear any feedback requests that you have. And hey, if you have any compliments, I want to hear those too. Lastly, if you would take a second to rate and review the podcast, it is very helpful and I would appreciate that. I look forward to seeing you next week. See you then. One more thing before we officially, officially wrap up this show. Sometimes when I'm listening to podcasts, I have the experience of wanting more. I'm listening at the very end thinking, I sure wish that episode didn't end. I invite you, if you feel in any way the same way, I invite you to the Special Needs Mom podcast community, which is a free group that I host on Facebook, where we as a community of fellow moms who listen to this podcast and are experiencing life in similar shoes, get to talk to one another, get to share stories, get to actually interact. I hope you'll consider joining. See you over there.